Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, how was yesterday? Okay, um, 
um, helps to have this kind of properties, okay, product mode, right? So toxicity, persistence, and uh, conversion, and also the weight and long range transport. So due to the this one, long range transport, house problem is not just a local problem, local issues. It's a regional and global issues. Okay? So even your countries do not use pubs, but the other country, if they use the pubs, and then they contaminate your environment. So because of these reasons, so yes, the Hong Convention was initiated. And there are three categories for pubs. The first one is pesticide, one common pesticide. Actually, there are so many different types of pesticides, but in the Stockholm Convention, we only focus on organ, organ chlorine. Chlorinated pesticide is much more toxic and long lasting chemical. And such as DDT. And the second group is industrial chemical, proposed by commercial, commercial purpose, produced by or commercial purpose. Uh, there are many different types. But the PCB is very uh, famous chemical. And at the DDE, the BDE, commercial the flame retardants in order to suppress the fire and flame. And the other chemical is also the similar properties for either circle box. And the third class is byproduct. So produced by incomplete proportion, for example such as dioxin. So here's the red color is nine new pops and blue color is actually seven new pops. So actually when the school convention was initiated and we focus on the black cankers, twelve canker. But year by year Stockholm Convention adds new canker. So the pops problem and the analytical method development the target chemical, it just, there is never ending, never ending story. So, here are some chemical structures of the initial parts. So, as you can see here, all these chemicals generally have some benzene rings or cyclic structures, and all of them have many chlorine atoms. So based on these structures, so you can expect that any chemical with benzene rings or cyclic structures, and if they have many chlorines, and then they are toxic. Pops like chemicals. And also recently, we also proposed on dominated compounds. So chlorine and bromines, they are hydrogen, hydrogen atoms. The property is very similar. Uh, this is a dioxin. The frame of dioxin is polychlorinated PC, polychlorinated dibenzo dioxin. And this is dibenzo furan. This is a basic structure of dioxin. Okay, I will explain again. Okay, uh, here are nine new parts in 2009. So this chemical pesticide and this chemical are produced for industrial purpose. So you can see here, this chemical pesticide also chlorinated. But this chemical bruminated or fluorinated. And also you can think, uh, see this one, this structure, chemical structure, and dioxin chemical structure and PCB chemical structures. Two benzene and oxygen, and chlorine or bromine. Okay? This is a very basic structure for very stable and toxic properties. Okay? And also, recently, there are seven new parts, the endosulfan, pesticide, and the other chemical, especially for the industrial purpose. And like this. 
So all these key requirements will be shown in the civil properties. In engineering, or scientific structure, or many problems. So you can visit this website and you can download this uh, very short reports. So there are 16 new pops. Okay? You can simply download and you can get more information from that camera, those key requirements. Okay, still, the stock informations consider many other uh, new chemicals. Uh, these are reviewed chemicals, 16 new pumps, the list. And also, currently, there are two major chemicals on the review. Tigopol, kind of pesticide, and also PPR, it's kind of foreign compounds. So probably they are, can be listed to the end to the spawn commission list. So this means that every year, so many nations suggest or propose on another chemical. So every year there will be a possibility of a new addition of chemicals. Okay. Okay, this is a uh, structure of dioxins. Okay. So PCD and furan. And there are two oxygens and two benzolates. And this is a number of positions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. So actually, there is a position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 position for substitution by chromium. So we can say mono, mono, mono. When this structure has one chromium, and then mono, mono, and di, tri, tetra, and then so on. So the PCDD have two isomers with one chlorine here or here. And furan have four isomers. Okay? So the total number of congeners or isomers is 75 and more than 100. So in total, more than 200 congeners they have. It means that in the environment, more than 200 congeners there. But our target compounds generally about 17 toxic chemicals, toxic controls. So among them, we only focus on these based structures. 2, 3, 7, 8, TCD, tetra, chlorine, chlorine, dioxins. So chlorine is located here. It, is, it looks very symmetrical, very stable. Planar structure. If the chemical is twisted and then uh, it has a low affinity to some uh, DNA structures. But for these cases, very stable. Okay. So uh, this is a GC MS uh, mass spectrum. So I will explain again. But uh, y axis is some abundance peak height or intensity abundance and x-axis is m over z value m is such as molecular weight and z value is a charge molecular charge plus one or plus two so if the molecule have a plus one charge and then m over z value is the same as molecular weight okay so probably generally the last peak is a Molecular weight. Okay, so for these dioxide continuous, molecular weight is 321 grams. Okay, you can see the similar. Okay, so individual chemical have their own MS spectrum, like a fingerprint. Okay, so any chemical they have their own. Mass spectrum. Okay. okay uh, so almost more than 200 congeners, isomers. Uh, we generally focus on 17 toxic congeners. So all these chemical congeners have two, three, seven, eight positions. The basic structure is this, and then we can add from here, here, and so on. Okay. So this chemical 
have uh, some toxic evaluation values. It is called toxic equivalence factors, TEF, TF. And then, uh, sorry, this, this is not TQ, this is TF. Okay. Toxic equivalence factors. Um, based on this, this one, 237 ATCD is what? This is a relative toxicity. And the other chemical have a lower, relatively lower toxicity. So it means that even the total concentration of dioxin is very high, but toxicity can be low. Or sometimes the concentration of dioxin is generally low, but toxicity can be very high. It depends on the chemical composition. Okay? So in the environment, generally, OCDF or OCDD is generally they show very high concentration. But you can see the toxic value is very low. Okay? So we have to consider total concentration, absolute concentration, and also toxicity-based concentration. So we can just multiply these values into the real concentration. Okay, this is really easy concept, simple concept. Okay, th uh, this shows the comparison of toxicity of real stocks with the dioxins. So if uh, this is an LD50 value or a left value, means that LD50, lethal dose 50. How much we need to kill the 50% of that? Okay. So we can take some medicine and inject to the animal and then fit some amount how much we kill the animal. Okay, this is the LD50 value. And the LD50 value is very low for TCP. It means that it is very exhausting compared to other things. So HCV. So much. Okay. So we can eat actually more the chemical and then um, not so many people kill for example. Okay. So this is why we more focused on the parts we more focused on dioxins. Okay, the for the understanding of environmental behavior, there are two uh, key chemical properties. Actually there are so many different types of Fish chemical properties of chemical. Uh, for example, this one, hydrophobicity, solubility, vapor pressure, and dissociating tendency, and so on. There are many um, properties. So among them, partition characteristic is very important. And then second one is half-life. Degradation half-life is very important. Because generally, pups have a long half-life. It means there's some chemical, uh, for example, this chemical is very toxic, but the degradation weight is very high. So it means that the half life is very short, within 10 seconds or one minute, and then it's fine. Okay? But if the chemical's degradation on half life, for example, more than 10 years, 20 years, like hops, and one semester to the environment, they can okay, exist for a long time. So the partition properties of is very important. This chemical is the chemical structure is like this. Okay, so it's carbon chain and at the end OH alcohol. Okay. So alcohol means OH means it is more soluble. Okay. And carbon chain means less water soluble. The structure is very similar to uh, uh, lipid and also some detergent, polar head and non-polar pain. So this octane, the chemical properties are very similar to of the bio, bio lipid. So if some chemical dissolves very well in this it means that we, organism, we can also accumulate the chemical in there. So this chemical is a uh, 
okay? So the external to solve things, it can mimic real situation. So based on the obtained law, we can calculate partition properties. So for example, P for A values, the concentration ratios between volcano and air. So if this value is very high, it means that the chemical is not so volatile in the air. It is more tendency, have a tendency with contained in the body liquid. The table W correlation between volcano and water, what sort of chemical or not? can judge from these values. And this is air and water. Okay. So this relationship is between constant practice. Okay. So the CO2, CO2 dissolved in water, so we will go to, uh, to the air evaporation. So this is the air water gas exchanges. Okay. And this is a function of temperature and also pressure. So temperature and pressures can determine these values. Then increase in temperature by the climate change, the partition coefficient can be changed. But pressure, the atmosphere pressure is similar, right? But at the bottom of the ground and high altitude of the mountain can be changed. But for general ambient concentration, uh, ambient conditions, the pressure is not a good uh, important function. Functions. Only temperature is very important. Okay. So finally, we can combine these three equations into a single equation. And we can make a row scale. And then we make these equations. So based on this equation, we can make this chemical specimen. X axis is rho K or W. Y axis is rho K or W. The hexagonal line is four. Where is it? Row K or A. Okay, the three combination of these equations is row squared, and then we can make this kind of problem. Okay. And this is more complicated for us, so this is a, uh, the same thing actually. So row K or A values, okay. and row K W values here, and row K. So in this plot, uh, PCB, so located here, PCB also have uh, more than 200 consumers. Okay? And this is dioxin and fura, okay? and pHs. So any chemical can be point, uh, located on this map. So based on this map, we can expect their environmental effects. So when they have a property here, it means that this is a sea and fresh water. Water sort of okay. okay. Here is some sediment and soil. And this part is the atmosphere. So it means that the parts, many of the parts, is between green uh, areas, multi-media chemicals, and soil and sediment. So most of the parts exist in soil or sediment. So even there is an emission into the air, mostly they enter into the ground environment. Okay. So later, so without any monitoring and modeling study, so if you know the volcano W water is passing values, and then you can expect which media we have to monitor. So emission trend of pops, there is a commercial product uh, chemical increasing emission and fast decrease. So it means that the government or national agencies, they become aware that they are toxic. So they ban the use of chemical. So after that, there is a sharp decrease of the emissions. So all the pops show similar temporal variations. So this is some the evidence of parts decrease in the United States. Okay? There is a sharp decrease through this emission profile. Okay? But here is some problem for uh, 
past, based on past performance. Okay, even there is an emission trend, increase and decrease, fast increase. But the green car is very volatile and have a very short duration half life, and then they follow this tendency, concentration in the environment. So it is for the fast investment. Okay? For these cases, no problem. Okay? The problem is like this, slow reversibility, partial reversibility, and sometimes even there's no apparent decreasing trend. Just show the continuous level. Okay? So generally, for this kind of patterns, we can easily observe in the sediment or soil for very uh, hydrogenated heavy molecular weight compounds. Okay? And volatile and very uh, life and very short and then they show this pattern. But many of the parts show this pattern or this pattern. So so in your countries prohibit the pops emission, especially the pesticide for example. But after 30 years later still in your country, we can, we can analyze POPs in 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. So based on the multiple faith model, more than 100 years required to very uh, observe very low concentrations. And this is some overall multiple faith of POPs, emission to the air, and only transport to the high altitude or the Arctic or Antarctic. And then wet the ocean by snow and rains. And here is uh, air gas exchanges and sedimentation and suspension and dry and wet the ocean. So the pops is not just a one single medium problem, it's a multi medium problem. So for many cases, for traditional pollutants, air pollutants, let's say, water pollutants, and the environmental scientists focus on the medium. Media specific approach is required for that chemical, such as SO2, CO2, CO, okay? or well, phenol in the water, okay? nitrogen, phosphorus in the water. Okay? But for pops, we have to analyze all the media. Okay? So pops are not media specific approach we have to use. Okay? The pop, for pops analysis, we have to consider all the multimedia processes. Also, the global transport is also important concept. So there are three major processes. The first one is cold strapping. So when the pops go to the high altitude and latitude regions, temperature drop. It means that condensation from the atmosphere gets us phase into particle space or surface environment. Okay. So this is why we can measure the pops in the snow ice block or snow cap in the Arctic and Antarctic. And second is global fluctuations. So when the chemical moves to the low, low distance, volatile chemical more easily move to long distance. So the fractions copy are the fraction and profile in this region and this region and high altitude region can be changed. So in the Arctic regions, so relatively volatile chemicals are abundant compared to middle latitude zones. Okay. So for middle latitude zones, the heavy molecules, the fraction is high, but for high altitude zone and high latitude zone, they have a high fraction of light molecular weight uh, compounds. And this is the last one is glass hopping. Like a glass hopper, jump. Okay? First, evaporate into the air and deposit into the soil. And so when there is a temperature increase during summer, for example, again, evaporation, deposition, evaporation, deposition. So like glass hopper. So these are three major processes for the overall the global pollution of pops. 
Okay. Uh, second part is principle of instrumental analysis. Okay, the second tool for air, uh, high volume sampler and required, or sometimes PAS is a passive sampler. Passive sampler is widely used recently. And for solar sampling, so simple solar sampler or shortwaves can be used for solar sampling. It's not a big deal, it's easy to correct the solar sample. And other is surface segment, we can use a grab sampler. Grab sampler. And so core sampler can be used for segment, and also ISO or slow core, and bottle can be used for sampling, and so copy samplers can be also used for and SPMD, semi-permeable membrane device. This is a passive water sampler. It can also be used for pops in the in the for a long time in the water. The last one is for the deep ocean or the large scale a river or lake. We can use this type of samples. Okay? So after collecting the sample, the first step is extraction. So yesterday you have a thing. Okay, so uh, the ASD accelerated solvent extraction, that was very good. Okay. And the subsurface extraction is very basic for the extraction, solvent extraction of solid sample. And the second step is concentration of using rotary evaporator or towel cap. And the third one is cleanup, cleanup procedure using some uh, silica drug product. And the final concentration, and then instrument analysis using various type of mass spectrometers. Okay. So right now this is a very basic. Okay. So uh, some people still use GC ECD or GCF5 for types of analysis, but this is just a screen purpose. We can use that instrument. But right now we have to use mass spectrometers. And finally, uh, pre-cushion quality control and quality assurance is required. The solvent extractions, or if this is for the liquid liquid extraction, okay, for water sample, liquid sample, you can use solvent and mix water sample and just shrink. Okay. And then the pollutant in the water move to solvent. Okay. This is very simple, simple separation method. But if there are many samples, it takes longer time, it's labor intensive. Okay. So still this battery hate this shaking. So we, we can do this one. Okay. We have to shake it. And for these cases we use large volume of solvent. Okay. So we can use reduced solvent using this one. Solid phase extraction. SPE we say. S P solid phase extraction. So this is a water sample, and this is a, it's kind of some silicon. Uh, okay. And so here is a uh, solvent so is located here, such as silica gel water, so solid solvent located here. And the air, a water sample, I did this, and then our tiny heavy car detained here and first uh, waste is go to this bio and then the second step we can use pure solvent to extract our tiny chemical from solvent and then we can concentrate and clean up the both okay, for our tiny chemicals. It's much more easy okay. and using this uh, many forms we can conduct these things, training how we assemble together. And for solid phase, uh, solid sample, the solid is uh, solid or air sample, we can use solidification. Solidification is a very soft extraction method, but it's easy it's to use, bath type or open type. But generally, we, we use this path time. And the soft leg extraction is a rotation method. There is a continuous reflux of organic solvent yeah, uh, by the boiling solvent by 
eating that food. And it takes about 12 hours, more than 12 hours sometimes. One day, it's stretching sometimes. Quiet. The suction that is the name of inventor of this instrument. So when we use this word, suction that, S should be kept. It's suction and extractor. extractor or suction and extraction. So any type of word you have to use a capital. So this is real proton for the suction app, and this is automated suction app. So this is much more expensive than this. This is relatively cheaper. AAC accelerates solvent extraction. So this is what to use um, high pressure. High pressure and temperature is about this. But because there is high pressure and there is no volume of solvent. Okay. So we can use small volume, relatively small volume of solvent to extract solid sample. Okay, and after extraction, from cleanup is the uh, issues. So generally you can use alumina or silicon material for pops. It's a very general option. So like this we already did it, right? Yes, yesterday. Okay. So I'll skip. So actually there's some video for that. So we can skip. Okay, uh, there are many different types of uh, absorbent materials such as silica gel, alumina, and fluorescer, and sterile, and carbon. So among them, we mostly use silica gel or alumina for separation of PCBs, ortho and uh, plana PCBs, and fluorescer for uh, so pesticide, and carbon for so dioxin or other pesticides can be used. So. Uh, you later can carefully read these sentences and then you can more exactly understand the properties of this solid material and the principle of clean. Okay? But the key point is that silica gel column is very basic. The silica gel columns generally remove a little bit polar compounds, the pops. The structure is very plan, it means that less polar or non polar. So our target chemicals are generally non-polar. But silica gel removes polar, relatively polar chemicals. Okay. Uh, evaporation, rotor evaporator is very basic, okay. but it takes time. Also, so manually, we have to treat sample by sample. Okay. So recently, we can also use this turbo valve. So automatically, they evaporate the solvents. And for the final concentration, we have to use nitrogen evaporator. Okay. So for example, uh, our solvent, okay, 20 milliliter or 30 milliliter, should be concentrated into about less than one milliliter. Okay. For dioxins, 200 microliter or sometimes only 20, 20, 20 microliter should be uh, used for the determinations. It means that large volume reduction is required. So during that process, if the solvent when evaporates, our target chemical can be also evaporated. Okay. So this process is very important. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about the instruments. So traditionally for pops analysis we use GC gas quantum rapid. So actually the word quantum rapid is a method, not an instrument. GC quantum rapid proof, pH is an instrument. Okay. K2I is an overall method of <coughs> So for example, uh, when in writing of papers, so we used GC quantum rapid is fine, but 
for the instrument we have to say we use O G C chromatograph pro. Okay. So this is the basic structure, gas supply, gas uh, bottle, and here is the injector, our injection for our sample, and this is color, oven, and this is detector, and the amplifier, this is a computer system. Okay. So this is a figure of photo of widely used uh, agent of GC. So this is auto sampler and this here is the injector. Without auto samplers, manually we have to use the uh, yeah, syringe <laughs> manually. Okay. So when I just rest still I, I did that manually. <laughs> so for 12 sample it means 12 hour, more than 12 hour. Overnight, I have to inject this. This or is my experience. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, it was very travel, right? um, very hard. So at the time, my uh, my friend, they just dropped this kind of study because fish curve is very so higher than this one. But why not? We can use the sample. So, if we go to home, just put the sample and it's gone. Okay? So, automatically they analyze. Okay, it's true. So, this is auto sampler and injector here. Okay? G show them. Then you open. Okay? So, here is this. This is a temporary column. So, generally about 30, 30 or 60 meters. Generally, we use 60 meters. 60 meter uh, car. Okay. Uh, injection mode. This is an injector here. Injector. This is a connection with our sample into the car. Okay. Injector. So this is CG, and this is needle, CG needle, and this is a car. Okay. So this is a hot part. Okay. It is heated. Okay. So our sample, final sample, is a liquid sample. Okay. From the GC buyer, the for example, about 20 micrometer, we collect about 1 or 2 micrometer. And then inject into this line. Okay. It means that very small amount is injected into GC. Okay. And then, the liquid phase it means the solvent, liquid type, liquid sample need, should be vaporized, become a gas. Okay? And our sample is become a gas. And then with carrier gas, generally helium or nitrogen and so on. Okay? Generally helium gas is used. So carrier gas, the gas carry our sample into the car. So there are three types of injection mode: split injection, split release injection, and large wave injection. So generally for pop analysis, we use split release injection because concentration is very low. So one microliter of sample, all the sample go to the heart. So if you use this on split injection, for example, only about 10% or 20% of our sample from the needle enter into the heart. Okay, it depends on the concentration level. So generally, for pops analysis, we use this split less injection. Okay, this is a structure of capillary column. Capillary is very narrow wall and a long distance, 30 to 60 meter. Okay. So within these uh, structures, uh, there is a few silica uh, out coatings. And also some uh, silica-based polymers located on the surface. And our sample generally, organic compounds have some affinity with column coating materials. Column materials. So if the column material have a strongly bind with our target compounds, and then our chemical tend to retain here. Okay. So this is a 
basic uh, piece flow cryptography. So this is uh, uh, how the Jewish kernel working. Uh, there are many types of GC detectors. 
such as FID, frame ionization detector, is widely used for hydrocarbon mobility. The second one is ECD, is a very good option for power substances. Because ECD, electron capture detection, halogen, the outer shell, the halogen atom, have some very really strong field with electron. So there is an electron flow, and they can detect it, capture the electrons. So, Small number of um, halogen atoms can be detected by ECD. Okay. And the other thing is used for specific chemical. And last one is a very universal detector, mass, MS, mass spectrometry detector. Okay. This can be used for other many of the chemicals. So for power analysis, our option for screening is ECD. And we are on this is S. So this is an example of quantum DDT. So actually the DDT, the environment, they undergo the very fast metabolism, so they can show different uh, metabolites, such as DDE or DDT and so on. Okay? So this is uh, some quantum example. And this is a current level 2378 TCTF that I have from Furan. Furan current level. So, okay, like this. In these cases, we, this is just a standard, standard current level. Okay, then the second option is LC. Most of the parts we can use using GC, but LC is also required. So when the chemical is not so stable at high temperature. So injector more than 100, oven also more than 100 degrees. And also for the ionization method, there is an electric impact. I will also explain later. So electron impact is hot ionization method. So if the molecule is very labile for their temperature and electron impact, we cannot find molecular weight peak. Okay. Because the molecular, uh, this molecule, original parent molecule, become very small molecule by the fragmentation. So for the cases, we use LC. And also, target chemical is very water soluble, and then we can use LC. Okay. So this is just about the HPLC. So the solvent is used for separation of chemical. So this is a component, solvent, pump, injector, and HPH column. The GC column have a long uh, length, but LC column have less than 30 centimeters, very small, sometimes just 10, 10 or 5 centimeters LC columns. And detector, the UV, or a fluorescence, or mass spectrometer, this can be detected. So we say, GC MS or LC MS. So GC and LC is a sample introduction method, and MS is the analytical detector type. So this table is the analytical scheme for various types. Um, this chemical can be also screened by GCECD and KGSB or PCM, GCECD or GCMS or HRMS here you can see, HRMS, PCO dioxin, the HRMS or GCMS slash MS, GCMS MS. So we will study about this later. Okay. HRMS means high resolution. Okay. And MS MS means Tandem, tandem MS, tandem. So using various methods, we can analyze the, the pops. But here is some analysis time and distribution volume and cost. For dioxin, the cost is pretty high compared to other target compounds and methodologies. Okay, so general option for pops analysis is HRMS, GC, higher resolution, mass spectrum, GC, HRMS. 
So right now, there are only three options we have. Only three manufacturers they provide the HRS. So Waters Autospec and Jero in Japan and Thermo. Okay. But right now, Waters stop the production of HRS. They want to ship it to GC MSMS. No more HRS. So we only two options, but the price of this is much higher than this one. So generally, we can buy this one. Okay. And so why we need high level channels? Why we need okay. so small scale to stop GCMS is used for thousand uses, but why we use expensive and large scale? MS. You can see the size, comprehensive size, GC. And GC MS is generally very similar size. But high resolution MS is much, more, much larger. And then, beside or uh, the afterward this MS, some pump and chiller, it will require more space. Okay? So large space are required for the HRS. But we have to use this one because this problem. Okay? Uh, this is a MOG value again. You can simply think this is just molecular weight. Okay? Just molecular weight. Uh, this is a different different pig is different chemical. So generally our target chemical is dioxin, this one. So molecular weight is this one. <coughs> 0.89 okay? But the other chemical, look okay. at It's very similar. When we just molecular weight, we just say 12 for carbon, 1 for hydrogen, and so on, right? Well, H2O 18, and so on, just for that. But for dioxin and the environmental contaminants, all the similar values. So if we use GCMS, just GCMS, we cannot distinguish this chemicals. Only high resolution MS or MSMS, they can separately analyze dioxins. So for example, you, you reported dioxin levels, some sort of level, but in actually it was not dioxin, but DDT or DDE. It happened. Okay. So USCP method. So this is a, a very basic method for dioxin. So in this USCP method, they use HRS based on this water water spend. Okay. Extraction, cleanup, and concentration. Uh, this is a EP method's uh, standard solution. Uh, probably you understand the external calibration method or internal calibration method for quantifications. Probably in this afternoon, probably you can learn this kind of thing. Okay. Analysis. Okay. So we need standard. Okay. So the company, such as Wellington or CIR, provide some commercialized mixture of standard. So for pulps, the type of standard is a little bit complicated. For general, just a single calibration standard is okay. But there are three types, maybe. The first one is a native standard for calibration. We say calibration standard. This is a native standard. Okay. So this is a concentration value, CS2, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, so much more values, so calibration values. They are all commercialized concentration compounds. And the second type is labeled dioxin. Also we say solvate standard, solvate standard. Okay. And this one is cleanup standard. And also, this internal spin can be also used for this purpose. But 
generally we can think three types. The first is calibration, make a calibration call, so directly inject into GC. And second type is survey standard. Before sample extraction, we put to our sample. This is survey standard, label standard. And lastly, at the GC buyer, before injection into GC, we need to add more standard. This is internal standard. So clear standard sometimes for um, the industrial waste uh, MSWI is installation of sample. Uh, we can inject before the sample. Okay. But generally for water sample and soil sample, we need calibration standard, solid standard, and internal standard. So the calibration method um, is called I stop dilution method. Okay. So probably you have around about external standard method and internal method, and this is I stop dilution method. It's kind of internal standard method, but we can use I stop. So we it is called the I stop dilution method. So uh, quantification procedure is much more complicated compared to other general pollutant. So. I'm not sure how, how we can uh, understand uh, this method, but um, later we can raise some um, this EPA method or the test view, we can understand. So this is quite very this one. So this is native sample. Our sample was turned up. And this is the surrogate standard uh, peak. And this is the internal standard peak. So peak type is that different? Okay. There are many complicated standards. So, Taiyoshi uh, quantification is much more complex compared to another okay. So, this is more is explanation of calibration. Okay. So, these are all from the USDA method. Okay. Probably you can later read this skill. Uh, this is a comparison of MS system for pops. Uh, GC HRMS, okay. GC MSMS, we can first compare. Okay. So this is a uh, investment cost. It's much more expensive for HRMS. Okay. So operating cost is also expensive. And LOT, instrumental LOT sensitivity. How much your concentration can be analyzed using this instrument is good. Mm -hmm. Selectivity, the separation of different chemical high resolution is good. Mm -hmm. And the other key, but the problem is the skill and training level high and level low. Mm -hmm. So this traditional method is very it takes time and the analysis is require more skilled persons and more expensive. But recently, GC MSMS tandem technique is more uh, is substituting for HLMS. But there are many other uh, type of GC MS or other type of MS uh, for possibilities. Okay. So let's have a five minute break. It's okay?
Uh, in my first science department, uh, this course is not open, but my supervisor, his major was organic chemistry, so I learned this uh, course. So I'm teaching in this documentary. Um, so I tried to pick up very important topic and very easy topic for this um, part, but I'm not sure how much you can understand. Well, I try to explain very easily. Okay. okay, the principle of mass spectrometry is make neutral molecule into ion. It's actually positive ion or negative ions, but generally our target are positive ions. So, M over Z value, mass to charge ratio, I already explained, molecular weight, and charge plus one or plus two or plus three. It depends on the method of ionization. But um, the mass spectrometer, some people think mass spectrometer can measure molecular weight. No. It can calculate, detect energy not mass. So this is just king, the world's king of mass spectrometers. The first one is sample impact and ion source. We make neutral molecule into ions, so it is called ion source. And the third one is mass analyzer. We want to separate different ions according to their net MOZ value. And detector. MS is the detector, but there is a more specific detector for that. Okay, lastly, data system. So sample in that journey, uh, here is the atmospheric pressure or sometimes friction. And for this reason, ion source and mass analyzer and detector, we require high vacuum. So we need to top up uh, the pump to remove other gaseous molecules. In ambient air, about 8% of air is N2 and 20% of oxygen. So this can pressure, uh, these gases should be removed. So our purpose is only introduce our organic molecule into this system. Uh, for example, for sample in lab, GCN acid we have already done this. And another thing is DIP and DP. And for I source type, EI, CI, FAT, MARD, and ESI are used. So there are many options actually. And for mesolarizer, magnetic sector, electric sector, double focusing, this is combination of magnetic and electric. And colorful, this is one of the widely used pinch top, small scale GCMS. And ion trap, IT, ion trap. And for it, transform ICR, and top, time of flight. So there are many combinations of mass analyzer. So when you see some, the product of MS, you can make, say, GCMS, GC top, GCITMS, and so on. It's a combination. So any kind of combination is used, but generally we use GC, EI, quadruple, or GC, EI, double focusing, HRMS, or HRMS. And for LC, LC, and ESI, and then quadruple, or I track, or top are general options. Okay, um, so FAB and RD is widely used for the biomolecule and large molecule. So our concern is a relatively small molecule, molecular weight about around 300 or 400 up to 400. So for the cases we use EI and CI or ESI. So today I'd like to explain EI, CI, ESI and this one, balance sector and protocol. I'm 
technique is the same in solutions, DIP and DEP. Uh, this is not widely used for power system for solid or mass or liquid is you can use this one. But our general option is GC or S. And EI, electron ionization. This is an EI source. Okay, the real photo. So EI means how to we can make neutral molecule into ion during the post ions using EI, electron ionization. Uh, here is a filament of the metal and there is some electric energy input and then there is an ejection of the electron. So we say electron beam, like the dawn. There is a continuous ejection of the electron. And when our sample molecule enters into this area, our molecule and there is an electron beam on bottom. Okay? And then some molecule have a in electron infection and then the molecule lose one electron or two electrons. Molecules infected by electron, they lose one electron for them. This is the N plus. N plus. If they lose two electrons, this is N2 plus. Okay. It becomes ions. So there are many types of DI processes. So the molecular, uh, this is our molecule ABC with the different atoms and electron infection, and then it becomes ABC plus or ABC plus or two plus, or the separation of fragmentation of our molecule into ABC, A plus BC, and so on. There are so many combination types. Uh, for the electron detections. It means that if there's an apple and we shoot the apple, the apple becomes fragmented. Sometimes apple just show uh, exist uh, as the same shape. But sometimes some apple can be break down into the two parts. Or sometimes uh, become very small pieces. So like this process. So this is a okay, more like a simple combination. So A, B, Y, Z, G become this kind of fragmentation ions. So this is an example for ER mass spectrum. At 17 electron volt potential, this is 17 electron volt potential. Seven, uh, this is a power of electron impaction. So this is a general option, 17 electron volt. All the GCMS want to use, they use 14 of them in this one. So any chemical, they are impacted by this electron load, show their stable, um, very constant fragmentation patterns, whatever the, the instruments. Okay, so this is the general option. So this case is, work rate is a bit one MO cigarette is this one and then it makes very small peak. Other fragmentation show the much stronger problems. And for rather soft ionization, small power, it contains large peak on MO cigarette, rate peak. For these cases, there is a MO value, so we can use this one. But sometimes we lose this peak, and then it's better to use not EI or ESI or CI rather in the peak point. So many chemicals have their own fragmentation patterns. Is in the mass line. Probably four main chemical. Most of our Thai chemical have their own fragmentation pattern, and we have a library, so we can identify. Okay, this, uh, uh, we can find some criminal. Okay, based on your fingerprint record, you are a criminal, right? Like that. 
So if you find a specific pattern and then, okay, this is a polling dioxin, okay, you need to find conform of the chemical. Okay, and this is a signal to noise ratio, S ratio. So S ratio means signal, this is signal, and noise is this one. So if the concentration is high and or sometimes the instrument is very nice, and then we can get high acceleration. But instrument is not so good, and the concentration of high temperature is very low, and then we get noise, noise level is high, relatively. So we can get low acceleration. This is a very basic concept for identification, quantification guideline for chemical. So generally, S ratio 2.5 or S ratio 3. 2.5 or 3 is guideline for you can detect. Okay, below this two level, this noise level and peak level cannot be perfectly distributed. And for that cases, we say it's not detected. Okay, the EI, EI is generally um, the good options, but for the case of a very soft chemical, they lose molecular information. For that cases, we can use CI, chemical ionization. Uh, this is very soft method. Um, they do not use electron. They use some gases. Okay. Nitrogen, or argon, or some ammonia. ammonia. Okay. So, using this more, uh, gas molecule, they make a positive ion or sometimes negative ion. So, PiCi or NiCi or NCi, you say. Okay, like this. N plus the chemical produces some other positive ions. This is a soft ion method. But right now, we mostly use EI. Still, we use EI as general option. For CI, only Different chemical that you can use. Okay, CI source is the, the same as EI, but except plummet, plummet, there is no electron beam, but only you can add reagent gas to ion source. Okay, the structure is very similar. And third option of ionization is ESI, electrospray ionization. So this is what I use for LC, combination of LC. We get the sample, enter into uh, this ionization chamber, and there's a water drops. Okay. Water drops become smaller, 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 and finally, the ion can make. Okay, like this. Okay. This is water sample, and then it become smaller, 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 evaporation. Finally, it becomes a positive ion. So this is a principle of ESI. So this method is why we use for bio study, bio molecule, okay, protein, and sometimes DNA. So this is a ESI, ESI mass spectrum, uh, ESI electron spray ionization mass spectrum. Um, there are many charges. Okay, so higher molecule have a large molecular weight, and large molecule they have opportunity to get the protein tip, or they lose many electrons. For that cases, they show many different peak. But it is single peak for this one and for this one single peak. Different chemical, they can show different peak because of MOZ very can be changed. Okay. Plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, and so on. Okay. So based on some mathematical formula, we can calculate this into a single peak and this into a single peak. This is called the conversion method. But it is a good concept, but we can skip it. Anyway, EI spectrum, 
generally show many pig, but it is a fragmentation. But each side, the pig is not forming fragmentation, but by many multiple charge diagram. There are many multiple charges. So they have shown many pigs, but only several pigs can be selected like this one. So the mass spectrum, so again the mass number with elementary charge Z values, and plus ions, and also fragment ions, there are many fragment limitations. And we call it base peak. The most intense, intense peak of mass spectrum is the base peak. Base peak is our molecule, and then it's fine. So this is an example of the ERM spectrum of methane and 16. And then there is of one electron, one hydrogen, two hydrogen, three, and so on. Okay, this is a typical mass spectrum of methane. But for these cases, uh, the spectrum is much more complicated when we just use single single chemical, but they have many isotopes, for example. Okay? For example, carbon, carbon 12 and carbon 17, and bromine and chlorine, they have also many isotopes. Okay? For the cases, the M and plus ion, MOC values, 1, 2, 3, 4, Major four peaks, but this is only one chemical, one ion, M plus ion. This is due to ion. This is rather very uh, complicated concept. Okay, we analyze single chemical, very few chemical, but the chemical have ion. So they show different peaks. There's a slight different number. So for many cases, we just take the nominal mass, so the average is value, okay? H2O, so just 18. Okay. Nitrogen, 14. Hydrogen, 1. Carbon, 12. <coughs> but in the reality, okay, there are many isotopes, so we can analyze that this way. Okay. So CHBR2, Rules of one growing here and one other fragmentation. So this is a typical um, mass spectrum induced by isotopic elements. So but we have no problem. So this is what well listed as a library and software can automatically evaluate the what is this chemical. Okay. And as for the patterns, chlorine and globin, genome, so for pops, chlorine and globin is important. The abundance of globin isotope is very similar. The ratio is one to one, very similar. But chlorine is solidified chlorine, chlorine 37, is the ratio is about three to one. Okay? So any chlorine, if we analyze pure chlorine, just chlorine, then you can get two p. So if there are two chlorine, Cl2, three peaks. Okay, four chlorine, four peaks, five peaks, and so on. It's a combination of some possibilities. Okay. It's very complicated, but we don't worry about it. Okay. So for example, this molecule, so there's nine carbon, three nitrogen, and three chlorine. So we can consider carbon isotope 12 and 13 and chlorine isotope 35 and 37. So 1, 2, 3 is basic uh, peak by chlorine. The small peak here, right here is induced by carbon 13. Okay. You see here, so carbon, all the carbon is 12, 9. 12, 8, and we sort of have a single okay. One difference. Okay. So this is the reason why we show general objects. So many different peaks, small peaks. But 
this is due to, or the answer is uh, isotope. And resolution is a lot of important issues. So R, we say R. R is calculated by this M, molecular weight, and delta M, between nearby. Okay? So for these cases, uh, delta M is here. Delta M. And M is uh, the molecular weight of this P. So R is high, large, very large number. It means that the peak can be perfectly separated. But R is low, it means that peak can be overlapped. So high resolution MS means they have a very high number of R. Even very similar molecular weight compounds, they can be separated by high resolution. So also we can say it's resolving power. Resolving power. Okay, this is an example of uh, resolution. At the same resolution, R is 500. A small molecule, the molecular weight is 50 and 51. Okay, and difference is one unit, one unit. And then the molecular weight, uh, R resolution is 50, uh, 500. For these cases, molecular weight is 500 large molecule. And this can be also a resolution R is the same as 500, but peak is a little bit overlap. And higher molecule is more, much more overlap. So when you say the same resolution, but based on their molecular weight, the separate is there and the separate is not, but separate. So fortunately, our target chemical is less than 400. Three was three, uh, four or 300. So uh, we generally use the work, uh, high resolution numbers for uh, 10,000, more than higher than 10,000. It's enough for the separating thousand and other chemicals. So one of the issues for resolution, for example, R thousands and ten thousand and twenty thousand. Okay. So when we use low uh, low resolution MS, you can just find one thing, and then you can think, okay, there is one thing. But if we use high resolution MS, you can say, okay, there is two things. Okay. So this is why we use HMS. And also, uh, this is a very uh, complicated example, but the concept is very simple. Uh, here is a molecule, C16H12O and SI. Carbon and hydrogen, oxygen and silica, they have four different isotopes present. So this is all the possible combination of molecular weight. Okay? The MO was value, exact MO was value is quite different. But the same set, same compounds. But when you use HRMS, you can distinguish all these kind of chemicals. Again, for the ice pattern of large molecule, it's a small molecule. The so MO is very is about thousand. Okay. For large molecules, they show more pain. It's more complicated to interpret the mass spectrum for large molecules. Okay. So this is an ER, ER mass spectrum. So ER electron impact is not good for large molecules. For their cases, we can use ESI. And this is another example, R, according to the increasing R, we can resolve the different um, patterns. Okay, uh, common mass analyzers. So far, I explained ion source, electron impact, chemical ionization, 
and on this side. And then, after ionization, how to separate this ion is a method uh, can be done by methyl analysis. Okay, there are actually so many different types. Top, time of flight, top, magnetic sector, and color core, and color core ion trap. This is just PSA ion trap. This is a color core ion trap type. This is ICR ion cycle strong, that means. Um, so their option is to use color core. Yeah? Okay, uh, the top is uh, based on, actually there are many equations, but this is important. Energy is this one, the moving energy, kinetic energy equation. <coughs> this is very basic physical equation. Okay. M, molecular weight, or mass. V is speed. So when we use input the same energy into different molecules, okay, the molecule get the same energy. Then the M, smaller molecule, small molecule go fast. Or the large molecule go slow. Okay. And it's like the same as people. Big guy and small guy, I push the same power, the big guy just stay there. Small guy go to that location, right? The base also is that you put the same power. Okay. And then the moving. Moving speed can be changed. This is the principle of the time of flight. The flight means in a vacuum system, the ion flight move. Okay. So this is a type of linear pole. You push the ion and then it goes to this way. Smaller molecule go faster. Okay. Large molecule go slowly. And this is a reflector top. I, there is a repression. It means that it gives more patterns. More patterns means more separation of chemicals. Okay? Long distance is can be provided. So uh, top is a very powerful tool to separate the ion with their mass. Okay? Based on the time trip, time difference. The second one is magnetic sector. Or well, electric sector, their principle is very similar. The magnetic sector. Here is a magnet, and then there is some. If there is a neutral molecule, and neutral molecule is not influenced by magnet or electric field, only ions can be influenced by magnetic or electric field. Okay. So this is about that uh, equations. Okay. Like this. This is a magnet for the MS. So you can see here, okay, B and I have values in the right hand side. Probably in the middle school days, probably you, you didn't remember. Okay. Sometimes right hand, left hand row or right hand row. Okay. So this is right hand row. Okay. Thumb, I have front. Okay. B in this finger. Okay. F the force and some violet finger. So this is about uh, concept. When there is a magnetic field or electric field that like this way, an ion try to go to this way, but because of electron uh, electric field or magnetic field, ion can move like this way okay? by the this field. So based on this concept, uh, large molecule they tend to go straight. For small molecule, they be more different. So like this. So based on their mass, okay. So large molecule molecule is go this way and small molecule go this way. Okay. Based on their molecular um, weight. And this is a combination of double proportion means the combination of electro electric field and magnetic field. So we can get more resulting power, the high resolution when we use both um, instruments, magnetic sector and electric sector. 
So for the conventional uh, HRMS, we generally do electric sector, non-electric sector, and then again electric sector we use. The general mass will just step the program this time. So um, it's very strongly separate I. So we say, so this instrument resulted in higher resolution. So we can say uh, higher resolution. Yes. So this way. Okay. So this is Geo uh, Japan Japanese SMS. Electric field and electric field and electric field. For example. And another option is quarter core. This is very basic. Some measures for small scale MS, the code for portable port is four. There are four rows, four means some rows. Okay. There are one, two, three, four. So, okay. so this rod has connected with DC and AC voltage. The electric changes the plus minus positive, plus minus, plus minus in three dimensions. So the ion, our target ion is positive, right? N plus. And then the ion try to pass through this space. And then if the, the ion are the this road become the positive plus and minus. And then our molecule tends to go this way. Okay? Again, so there are four roads. Way, and then ion try to go straight, but ion is positive, right? So right side load become positive and left side is negative, and then I tend to go this way. And some time later, we shift the direction from positive to negative, and then the ion become this way, and so on. Right? Okay. And then another, okay. if this is a 3D structure, so the ion path is will be like this way. Okay. And using this some electric um, conditions, uh, only our target ion can pass through and enter it to detector, but other ion can be ejected to outside of this polar pole. So this is a polar pole um, principle equation. Also DC and RF. You don't, you just, you don't need to actually to understand this equation. Just think uh, there is some change of electric signal and the ions uh, can be in the three D structures, they can move. Okay. So ion track is uh, principle is very similar to as protocol, but ion track is a three D structure, more small ion sources, small type of ion source, and so ions uh, molecules enter into this space. And then uh, there's an electron uh, EI, and then so the molecules, some molecules uh, are ions ejected into our side, but our target ions remain in this trap, and then they enter into the theater. Okay. This is a kind of small scale, three so structures, color pole. Okay. This is very similar. So uh, one of the good points for ion trap is that within this ion trap you can do tandem, tandem MSMS. Okay. MS, MS, MS. In, in this that uh, MS means the single MS means there is a electron impaction and then the ion uh, neutral molecule become ion. This is MS. And then additional electron impaction. And then fragmented ion become photo fragmented. This is another MS. We say tandem MS, MS MS. 
So in this side track, the NSMS can occur within this area. So with a further sophisticated instrument, you can do NSMS for using IO2MS. But um, the IO2MS is what we use for some high um, the high concentration chemicals, not for general pumps. Uh, this is a hybrid mass sonorizer, such as Q top. Q means triple quarter core. Okay? Q, Q, Q. Quarter core, quarter core, quarter core. Q, Q, Q. And top is time off from it. It's a combination of quarter core and top. It can be more good results, more good separation of our chemicals. So we say Q top. Okay, this is a hybrid metal analyzers. So much more expensive than the original the single top from a MS color problems. So after passing through metal analyzers, our ion enters into the detector. Okay, so this is an electron multiplier. So the small amount of ion enter into detectors and this ion signal should be converted into some electric signal. So it makes many electrons for the data recording. Okay? So consider that. So in this sample, we make a very small amount of final extract and among them only one microliter or two microliter enter into GC, there is separation, and also there is an electron infection, but only a small fraction of uh, neutral molecule become ionized. Okay. Then after mass filter such as color core and magnet, only a small fraction further arrive at uh, detectors. It means that very small signal. So we have to multiply this signal using this instrument. So this is a discrete diamond electron multiplier. So there's a separated panel diamond. And first the ion will enter into this channel. And then there is a more, more, more refractions of electrons. So finally, it gives small signal become very large signal. Another type is channel electron multiplier. Uh, this is a discontinuous, okay, discrete. Okay? There is a separation of uh, elements. But this is a continuous, continuous regression. This is a linear type and this is just a cube type. Okay? This is a micro channel break. This is a much more uh, small. Uh, uh, linear channel Q and then so the ion enter into this channel and like this way and there are very many refraction and then second step and third step more stronger um, the signal can be made. Okay, this is the overall uh, instrumentation of sector of time and as magnetic sector. Okay, here is a layer from the uh, central system. So GC, from GC, our molecular neutral molecule is into ion source. There is ion source here. Ion source, there is a electron beam, continuous electron beam. And neutral molecule become ion. Okay, colored ion here. So this is a neutral molecule and this colored dot are uh, ions. So ion enter into this pathway and then separate by magnetic field based on their molecular weight. Light ion and this is a heavy ion. Light ion more influenced by electric or magnetic field. The heavy ions would have a tendency to go straight. Okay? So these changing differences can be recorded as their molecular weight difference. Okay. And finally, ion enter into the detector, and then there is a, a electron signal multiplication.
binary computer calculate this signal into okay, some mass spectrum or quantum lab and so on. And this is colorful overview. Okay. Again, the gas flow will be the work right into and the finalized here, the planets, electron impressions, and then separation in this area with the color pool. And only our target character we can enter into by detector those So okay, the, this is review the scheme of the mass spectrometer. For separate net, uh, for pops we use G shape or AC and EI for ion division, the term worker should be the ion, so we generally use EI. Or sometimes the molecule is very soft, the weak, and then we use CI, we add a uh, use some gas. And the chemical is also very soft and large molecule. And then we use ESI, electro spray, for liquid sample. Okay, but ESI is linked with AC, not GC. Okay. And so analytic sector, electric sector, we use this one, double focusing MS for high resolution. And for the PHAs or some other pesticide, we can use color for high. And ion trap also, so also we can use top. Okay. So this is a very basic concept. So whenever you get some uh, information, advertisements, uh, brochure, or whatever from books, probably you can understand basic principles, specific. <coughs> Okay, this is the last part, uh, new analytical method. So, in this figure, the new paradigm of hand uh, means that uh, so far we heavily depend on HLMS. But as I explained, HLMS uh, have a yes, high cost and very, very trained personnel. It takes more time for analysis. And also sometimes uh, pre-treatment procedures, extraction and cleanup, also cost. cost. Okay. So we can use new uh, method, or we can use simple treatment and low cost. Okay, okay so. Last month, I attended the 2017 conference uh, held in Vancouver, Canada. So, the direct conference is one of the famous conferences in this field. Okay. So, in short, we say dioxins, but the frame of this um, conference is some um, halogenate organic compounds and, and so on. So, any organic compounds are pops, um, the chemical in this conference. So there are uh, more than 30, 30 sessions. So among them, uh, there are four sessions for new instruments. Okay. So new method of analysis. And the second one is new and alternate instrument method. And third one is non-target screening and determinations. And the last one is Developed a comprehensive technique for complex solution. So, uh, this is a called also environmental forensic. The forensic means um, so criminal investigation. We generally use this term forensic. But recently, we also say environmental forensic. So, environmental forensic was uh, well known for identification of oil spill. So based on oil spill quantum map, we can decide this oil from fish country, Texas, Alaska, Saudi Arabia, and so on. So we say oil fingerprint. Okay. This is the first application for liberal forensic. And also many methods 
should be also used for pubs or not. So I mostly join this conference. I just did the conversation sometimes or tend uh, try to listen to listen to the words. Uh, here's my boss in Canada, uh, my professors, the University of Toronto. Uh, he's a famous for the working of basic modeling and patient center of pubs. And also he is uh, Dr. Han Han at University of Canada. So he's also famous for patient sampling of pubs. So probably you can see some many information from the Stockholm Convention website. Uh, they provide, uh, they do some global monitoring of air. So for their purpose, they use patch base sampler. So both this professor and this guy <coughs> provide patch sampler to the main countries. Okay, uh, from these sessions, the main topic is this one, okay? from HRNS to different type of instrument. GC tender, MSNS, GC Q, quadruple, 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 triple, quadruple, we say, triple, quadruple, T, Q, and top, the calculation, the hybrid MS top. And GCI, what GC times GC top? There are two GC columns. Okay. The current RAM is one dimensional current RAM, but when you use this one, two dimensional or three dimensional current RAM is, is possible. Okay. And so, so this is a new instrument. And also another issue, the, the first issue is this one, using different instruments for pops analysis. And the second one is from target analysis to non-target analysis. So previous analysis is a target analysis. It means that there are target compounds. Okay? We want to analyze dioxin. Well, we want to analyze PCB. Okay? Yeah, this is a traditional method. But non-target analysis is that without specific purpose, we want to analyze everything here. Okay. For target analysis, we have to select and deselect dioxin. So we need two very long cleanup procedures and high resolution MS to only select dioxin. Okay. This is a target approach. Non-target approach is that not only dioxin, but also many other pubs and or other pubs like chemical, we want to analyze everything and to see which chemical is new, newly detected. Okay. Currently, we only focus on stockholm convention pubs, but it's not perfect. There are many other type of pubs like compounds. So we want to analyze. This is non-target screen. The scanning and non-scanning instruments. Scanning instruments, uh, this one. Um, okay. uh, time of flight, and so we'll check with another methodology, but I didn't explain today. The time of flight and the FDICR and color for scanning mode and magnetic sector scanning mode and we can, this is a number of components and signal to noise so you can see some sensitivity so we can analyze many components but this is MRM triple color for and this is SIM mode, color for SIM mode this is a select dial monitoring mode it means that uh, selected ion monitoring, SIM, I didn't explain previously, but this is very important for pops analysis. We have an uh, exact number of molecular weights. We input this information to MS, 
And then this instrument only analyze our target key. Okay? This is C mode. For scan mode, other for scan and also another sector scan means analyze everything. Okay? So for example, um, select like a scanner. Okay? So actually, you are potent for them. Among them, I'd like just find a single chemical among the 10, more than 10 chemicals. Scan more means scan every molecular weight range. Scan. So it takes time, more time. But same, select dimension mode is only try to analyze the same single molecular weight compounds. Okay, more fastly, only analyze. So the C mode is widely used for pop analysis. But if you use C mode, only 17 for example, thousand can be analyzed. The other chemical is we have no information there. But we can use scan mode for HRNS or to code blindness, but scan speed is not enough to detect everything. So there are hundreds of molecules and more than hundreds. Thousands of molecules. There are so many molecules, but for scan, we need time. And then during that time period, we lose many, lose many chemical information. So the scan mode is not uh, proper for motion for each uh, sector mass and for okay. For that cases, we can use time of flight, top body trap and FTI and CR. Okay. Top is very powerful to measure every peak there. Much more powerful. Thousand peak, ten thousand peak, they can analyze with others. So the top is widely used for screen purpose. Okay, uh, this is a current of MMS spectrum. So there is a front ramp here, and then each peak have their own mass spectrum. So this type of mass spectrum is their library. So the software exactly defined, okay, this peak number six is some chemical, number three is some chemical, and so on. And select the reaction monitoring or SRM or MSMS. This is an MSMS. The two mass spectrum information from quantum There is a single mass spectrum, and this mass spectrum is also secondary the mass spectrum MSMS. So it gives more information. So even the concentration of this peak is very low, so after MSMS, we can detect. And also sometimes, single peak, if there's a single peak, but sometimes single peak do not just consist of one peak, chemical. There are two chemicals, for example. There's no perfect separation of two chemicals. Okay. And then just GCMS, cannot distinguish this, what is this, this chemical. But after MS and MS, we can more exactly define, okay, the chemical is A and B like that. So based on, uh, compared to GCMS, GCMS and MS is more um, clearly analyzed target chemical. Okay, the physical structure is like this. Candle MS with the color fertilizer. The first color pole, this here is the ion source. First color pole, second color pole, and third color pole. So color provider is explains the separation of ion is of course first color pole and third color pole. And the row of second color pole is a collision cell. Like the ion source, there's an injection of nitrogen water. Gas. 
그래서 반반 먼저 our ion and the gas and the ion become more fragmented. Okay? They can be separated that thought cause. So we say T triple cause. And this is a triple cause of the MSN system. Okay, later I just I know it takes more time. Um, so um, I suggest you visit this website and then log in. It's a free website providing some this kind of instructions. Uh, the Asian technologies that uh, provide this method with yeah. LSINs using GCNSNs. So they show very strong evidence that the GCNSNS system can replace HRNS. Okay. So there is a video, about 30 minute video. Okay. You can probably later can get this video. And in this video, they provide some less MSNS parameters. Okay, so more specific uh, input data for the GCN MSNS. So this is GCN MSNS software. So the continuous is separated well. And this is a high resolution GCNS. So comparisons so show good visual. And this is uh, some calibration and video ranges. They also provide a very low number of RST relative standard deviations. And okay, signal of noise ratio, external ratios of CS1, low concentration of calibration standard, they show a high enough signal to noise. So external ratio of 3 or 25 uh, guidelines. Okay? So they show the high level. And the comparison of uh, low working energy sensitivity, very low concentration of sample, and you see two GCM SMS systems, they, yeah, they can analyze. The higher than 25 SMS ratios. And this is, uh, figure show the comparison of GCMS and tandem MSMS. Okay. This is GCMS, so the base value is high. Okay. GCMS is the base value is so low. So when the base value is high, it means that there are many, many other chemicals there. Okay. So base value is very low, it means that cleanup procedure is very, very long. Okay. So there are mostly our compounds, target compounds. Okay. But just GCMS, they show very bad for the baseline, but to say MSMS, they show very nice background noise reductions. And also, when you just use GCMS, then uh, this is a standard, and this is a sample, sample software. There is no peak because of the high baseline. Mm -hmm. High baseline, there is no peak only for GCMS. But for GCNSMS, this is a sample. So this figure show the powerful aspect of GCNSMS. So more simple cleanup can be used for GCNSMS. For GCMS or GCHMS, cleanup procedure should be very strong. Okay? Multiple columns and base. We have to put many solar material there. But when you use GCNSNS, more simple. Simple cleanup can be used for that one process. Okay, this is a GCNSNS system. So you can download things on app application mode. So many commercial companies they provide this their data mode for how to analyze how using their GCNS and system. And another uh, makers, the waters, they combine GC, AB, GC, atmosphere pressure, GC, and MSNS system. 
So actually, this system was made for AC and SNS. But they can switch to GC. So, this is a, a paper, so a very, very long journal on our chem analytical chemistry. So they also uh, reported that this NSNS system can be an alternative to HR. And this is thermal, thermal GC NSNS. The, this company also provides um, GC NSNS. Also, this old track type to SNS. They show the comparison with uh, GCN system and HRNS system. So, very similar results they obtained for each sample. And lastly, I'd like to introduce 2D GC technique. So this is a GCO column, the first dimensional column, and second column. There are two columns. Generally, the first column is long, and the second column is short. We can, we can switch the location column, but the motion is there. Uh, at first column, they separate groups. And then at the second column, they also further separate uh, the chemical. So, when we just use a single column, there is a quadrant and one peak, but sometimes this is not just single compound, two compounds, three compounds, four compounds. Okay. It depends on one color, but generally uh, many peaks can be overlapped. But to the column, they can separate more of Okay, like this. So they can make this kind of green color. The first major and second major. Okay. So this is an example of the diocesans standard column. The x axis is the first column and y is the second column. Okay. They can separate tetra. And, and so on. You can see this is a major first column and this is a small, short second column. Okay. So, um, in this case, the Reco, the company Reco, uh, Pegasus model is what we use for this purpose. So, using this instrument, we can also analyze the in one of the pops. But uh, this is much more strong for screening purpose. Which came from there because this is pop. Okay, uh, this is the end. Okay, summary and conclusions. Okay, uh, for the first part, I introduced pops and stable convention list pops and direction uh, properties and the interface. In the second part, I explained the overall. Sampling, quick treatments, extraction and cleanup, and useful analysis. And the third part, I explained the principle of mass spectrometry. The first talk is ionization, second one is mass analyzer, mass separation, third one is detector. The detector is widely used, we can use the same instrument. But ionization and mass analyzer, there are many combinations. And lastly, I uh, introduced a new analytical method, okay. paradigm shift from target analysis into non-target analysis, and also from HRNS into another type of NS, such as NSNS, and Chishma, which is top, and so on. So, my conclusion is, yeah, it's time to change. We, so far, we have a book, uh, depends on HRNS. But uh, it's suitable for the very rich country or rich people, rich instrument, and institute and university. But for general university or institute and countries, the HRNS applies an operation cost and training of personnel uh, is, is, is not easy. Okay? For 
that case is you can switch it, shift it into GCNS and system or other top systems. But still, the pops analysis is one of the most complicated and hard analytical topic. So there is a world if you can analyze direction and then you can do everything. Okay? So <laughs> but frankly speaking, it's much easier to analyze other chemicals. So I also analyze uh water main compounds and pHs or heavy metals. But the pop analysis is the most uh, difficult task. So Okay, and thank you very much. And so you can contact this my contact information is an email. You can also visit my website. And also in my lab there are two students from two students from Vietnam, uh, Vietnam, and one postdoc from Vienna too, and one student from Brazil. And next year probably the one student from Philippines. So, so I welcome for international cooperation and education and so on. Okay, thank you very much. Any any question or <laughs> Thank you.